What is a transistor? Specifically, a bipolar junction transistor is a three-terminal semiconductor device that can be used to amplify current. The three terminals are the emitter, the base, and collector. Two types of bipolar transistors are the NPN and the PNP. The NPN transistor requires that the base be positive with respect to the emitter in order for it to properly function. The PNP transistor requires that the base be negative with respect to the emitter for it to properly function. And an easy way to remember that is to look at this as a diode here, the emitter. This would be the anode of the diode. This would be the cathode. The collector current is proportional to the base current depending on the gain of the transistor. So the base current is amplified by the gain or beta of the transistor to give you the collector current. In this example, if you had a gain of 100, if your base current was 1 milliamp, if this was configured as an amplifier, which is also called the active region of op operating mode of the transistor, then you would multiply that and your collector current would be 100 milliamps. Multiply that base current times the gain and we'll give you 100 milliamps. Likewise for the PNP transistor, you would, you would use the same calculation. It's just uh, using a different configuration based on the polarity of this transistor here. Bipolar junction transistors can be operated in different modes. One would be cutoff, one would be active, and then one would be saturation. In cutoff mode, the, there's no base current flowing into the transistor. No base current, and so there's no conduction here whatsoever. And so what that gives you is this is your equivalent circuit. You just basically, it's, it's like an open switch. Let's jump over here to saturation mode. Saturation mode means that you're supplying enough base current to turn this transistor fully on to where there's almost, there's very, very low voltage across this, uh, meaning that it's the rough equivalent of a switch that is closed. So that's what this is. This is your saturation mode. So you've got cutoff, saturation. These two modes right here are what you have if you have a transistor configured as a switch. The active mode is your amplification mode, and that is where you have your base current is equal to your collector current divided by the beta. This is another way of looking at the operating regions of a bipolar junction transistor right here. Your cutoff region here, which remember is the electrical equivalent of an open switch where you have no current flowing from the collector to the emitter. It's going to be over here. That's when your base current is very, very, is zero or very, very close to zero. And this junction right here is not forward biased. You don't have enough base current to forward bias this junction here. So you have no, you don't have enough voltage, base voltage rather, to forward bias this junction. Therefore, you have no base current flowing. And then you have that. So over here, that's your cutoff region. As you increase your base current, you have, you enter what's known as the active region, where your IC, again, your collector current is equal to beta times IB, which is your gain, beta, times your base current. And that gives you your collector current. So all along here is that region. And as you can see, this line right here, the red line, would be your ideal response of the transistor. That would be IC divided by IB equals beta. So beta is the actual... Um, IC over IB is the slope of this, and that would be based on, on beta. So the actual response of the transistor for a period of time, for, uh, for a part of this, um, 
the extent of this uh, response is um, is roughly follows this ideal response here. So you have your active region over here, um, and um, as you continue to increase the base current, however, it gets to the point where increasing the base current no longer increases the collector current. And that's when you enter this region right here. That is your saturation region there where it acts like a switch. So if you had, say, 10 milliamps of base current, you had 100, 100 milliamps of collector current. If you drove that base current up to 15 milliamps or 20 milliamps, you would still have about 100 milliamps of collector current. So no longer increasing this base current will have any effect or continue to increase the base current will have no no uh, other continued effect on the actual collector current. And when you're over here, again, you have this switch here. The voltage across this is approximately zero volts. Whereas over here, this voltage can vary from anywhere to zero to the supply voltage because this is an amplifier. It could be anywhere in here. Uh, and over here, where you have cutoff, your voltage is across this is going to be equal to the supply voltage approximately because it's an open circuit. So that's the um, kind of a graphical representation of the ideal response versus the actual response uh, in terms of collector current versus the base current uh, for a bipolar junction transistor. A couple of examples of transistor switch configurations. This is a high-powered LED right here that uses an NPN transistor as a switch and is configured so that it either operates in cutoff or saturation mode. When it's in cutoff, this LED is off. When it's in saturation, this LED is on. And this base resistor here is calculated um, to be able to put this transistor into saturation and turn this high powered LED on with a very, very small current um, from a microcontroller and a five volt uh, level on this side. So that's one example of how you can um, use a transistor as a switch. As far as amplifiers concerned, there are so many different types of transistor amplifiers. That's going to be covered in uh, another series of videos. Uh, here is another example of a transistor switch in one of its applications. This is used to, to control a relay. So you have a resistor right here that is connected to a, say, a microcontroller. It goes up 5 volts, and then that 5 volts uh, will supply uh, a small amount of current to the base of this transistor. And the base of this transistor will um, uh, then uh, cause the um, that current will cause the collector current to be sufficient enough to to energize this relay and drop say 12 volts across this relay and close it. And when you the microcontroller goes back down to zero volts, the output port of the microcontroller goes back down to zero volts. Uh, there is no longer enough current flowing through this resistor through the base of that transistor to uh, energize this relay, and that's how you would turn the relay off with a very, very small signal from a microcontroller. Those are two examples of, of uh, transistor um, switch, can, bipolar transistor switch configurations, and two, two applications. So that's an overview of bipolar junction transistors, what they are, what they're used for, the different operating modes that you'll find them typically in, um, and um, how to um, configure them for these different types of operating modes. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.